Hi, Els here. And today what we're going to do is the Statement of cash flows T Account Proof. Now here's an agenda what we're going to do. Be aware that I'm going to split this into a number of videos, otherwise it'll go too long. So first we're going to go through the steps in the process for doing the T Account Proof, just so you know what is involved. It looks like there's a lot of steps, but don't get too panicked. They go very, very quickly. Next, we're going to do example one, Alexis Inc., which is a more basic example. Example two, Cooper Company is a little bit more complicated. And then example three, XYZ Company has two different proofs that you have to do. Let's start with the steps in the process. For doing a T-account proof, the first thing we have to do is determine whether a T-account proof is even required. If any of these following things exist in your cash flow question, then you know you're going to have to do a T-account proof. Key is looking at the additional information. It'll always indicate if multiple or only one of the following exists. So I'm going to move the page down a little. Anytime you see anything at all that has been sold, you probably need a T account proof. So that's if you see the sale of a tangible asset, property, plant and equipment, an intangible asset such as a patent or a copyright any investment activity that is both for the current investments, let's say trading investments, or if you see long term, if they have been sold, you're going to have to look at the T account proof. If any of the above, so intangibles, tangibles, or investments have been exchanged for debt or equity. So this means that I have purchased equipment in exchange for common shares. Finally, if equity or debt has had a debit and a credit, to give an example, debt has been repaid, so that would be a debit to loan payable. And we also took out a new loan, which would be a credit to loan payable. If I take the net of those two amounts, I'm going to get one number, but it's hiding information. So notice I place here, key, there was both a debit and a credit to any account where applying the formula would hide important information from who? The users of the financial statements so that they can't make informed decisions. If any of those things happen, you know you have to do a T account proof. So now, how do we do the process of the T account proof? First, we draw blank T accounts. So we're going to draw blank T accounts for any of the accounts. So if it was equipment, put a T account for the equipment, obviously. And I would also put a T account for the related accumulated depreciation. Next, if it involves a sale, provide the blank entry for the sale. If I've sold equipment, we know what the entry is. We know this from previous knowledge. There's going to be a debit to cash, a debit to accumulated depreciation, a credit to equipment, and then there's going to be this blank here. And of course, the blank is for either the gain on sale, which is a credit account, or the loss on sale, which is a debit account. And until we do our research, we won't know which one it is. Step four, using the statement of financial position, also called, of course, the balance sheet under ASPE, fill in the opening and closing amounts on the T accounts. So let's jump back up here for a second. Remember these T accounts right here. If I learn that equipment had an opening balance of 70,000, and that would be from the previous statement of financial position, also called the balance sheet, I would know this 70,000. And then I found out that at the end of the year, they had 82,000, I would fill this in. If the opening balance here was 28,000 and the closing balance was 20,000, I fill that in also. So I'm filling in all the information that I can. All right, so let's go back here. So fill in the opening and closing amounts on the T accounts. Number five, using the income statement. So now we're moving on to the income statement. Fill in the depreciation expense, if available, and the gain and loss on disposal or sale, if available. If those amounts are not available, keep in mind that you're going to have to look elsewhere. Last thing using the additional information, fill in everything else that you can. So the additional information will always give you something. Make sure you fill it in. What are we filling in? Remember the two things we are filling in. We are filling in this right here, any information for the T accounts, and we're also filling in anything for, and this was just an example, right? We're not just talking about the sale of property, plant, and equipment. It can apply to anything. Fill in any information you have from here. Once we have that, solve for all your unknowns. If done correctly, there is nothing that cannot be solved, which is absolutely true. What is the last step in the process? Categorize and provide the indicator for everything that will be used. 
on the cash flow statement. So what does categorizing mean? Categorizing means to identify the activity. O would mean operating. I would mean investing. And of course, F would mean financing. Provide the indicator. The indicator would be either a plus or a minus for each of the activities. So once we have that, step nine, fill in the cash flow. All right. So let's move on to our first example, but I'm going to do that in a new video. See you then.